Well, hello, hello, and welcome to the City Tree. Another Friday, so happy Friday, if it's Friday when you're watching. Um, I hope you've had a lovely week. My name is Jane, and I am an artist, writer, teacher, gardener, based in rural Scotland. And this vlog is all about things that happen in my studio, and my garden and the creative projects that I'm working on. Um, this week has been a bit of a kind of like stay at home kind of week. Um, I kind of tired myself out last week so this week I'm kind of taking things very easily. And um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was that I have actually started a new knitting project and this is the Heirloom Quilt Cardigan by Katrin Seeberger. And as soon as I saw this um, pattern pop up on my Instagram, I knew that I was going to make it because I have a batch of um, botanically dyed uh, yarn that I have not been able to find a pattern that I really want to make with it. And um, that is because it is not dyed with things from the garden. The backstory is I went to on a course with Julia Billings, who is woolen flower, and the course was at Garter Stitch Farm, and the morning was all about um, what you could do to dye um, forage for dyes, and the afternoon was about indigo, and Julia very generously let me dye some yarn that I was testing out. Um, in the end of the indigo vat and this is it it is a linen and bamboo yarn and i stock it in the shop so that i do have a vegan yarn uh, for studio clubbers who are vegan and i just wanted to know how it would dye with indigo so we dyed some skeins of that and then i came back and i dyed um other bits of things from the garden but also um, Julia gave me some sumac leaves which I dyed into this yellow and this green and as you can see the linen in this it makes it really really beautiful but it's also got a very different look from the rest of my yarn and I have been looking for a project that would show that off. I'm not going to dye masses of colours. I think I've got five or six, maybe seven colours um, of this. So I wanted something that was going to be quite graphic, um, quite simple, but also that didn't have great big long rows because I have found this yarn to be really heavy um, when I was doing tests, sort of in a circular needle. So um, Catherine Seaburger's pattern is really it's all just little bits like this little squares and then it is sewn up into a very unstructured cardigan with drop um, shoulders and then a completely plain sleeve and she has it as a very cropped cardigan that would come to here and all the photos of people are like this um, to show off the um, beautiful pattern but I am going to see how um, making it into a much longer cardigan, something that comes through like mid thigh length, um, works, which will of course be a lot more squares. But I think you can see already how this wool is going to work. So this is indigo, and then to be honest, I can't even remember what that oatmealy kind of colour was. Um, and there is a sort of like a, a paler one. Then this is the two ones of sumac and what I'll do is I'll just make up lots and lots of these squares because they're very easy to knit um, particularly when you're feeling a little bit fragile as I have been this week um, and then they get so this is going to be the seam allowance so when you sew it together you see the points match and it will look in theory like a patchwork quilt um, so that is what I have been doing and I've also been filming um, for August, September's uh, course in the Studio Club, which is all about um, 
dying with things from your garden um, or that can be easily foraged things that are quite uh, common and easily got together so uh, this week I have been filming about uh, flowers and leaves and then I still have to do um, cones and bark and I've also done a big bit about mordanting uh, cotton threads anyway that is beside the point but what I was going to say is while I had my camera in the garden I thought what I'll do is I will do a kind of like an August tour because the garden it's looking very flowery now it's got that whole kind of um it's so abundant it's almost at the point of collapse um which I always think is the most beautiful point in the garden um so I thought I would take the camera out there show you what's um, happening in the dye garden and then I will also film a bit about the perennial meadow which is um, it surrounds my studio and it's where I get lots of my inspiration from. So um, I will put all of the details about Catherine's pattern down underneath here but in the meantime I hope that you enjoy the garden tour. This is how the garden is designed to be seen with this kind of big patch of kale and beans and peas and all of that and then peeking over the top all the brightly coloured flowers. You can see here we've got lots of um, agastache and um, tobacco plants for the moths and then round here some achillea that I grew from seed and all of the pale ones are going to go into the meadow and I'm going to just keep the dark ones. You can see the raggedy last of the sweet peas. And then here, some self-sown fennel, which will all get removed as soon as the flowers go to seed. But also, they are supporting my scabious black knight which is a dye plant um, because officially this is a dye garden and you can see here sanguisoba sanguisoba I think is certainly when I was a florist sanguisoba was my favorite plant and it part of the reason for that is it just loves it here um, so this lot of white ones is actually self-sewn into the path and I've left them because I mean who could bear to rip those out and um, but it does mean that that side of the garden is impassable at the moment and this is a combination that I love it's a self-sewn um, calendula and then this very beautiful annual dolphinium and then you'll see sneaked in the back there is uh, one of my courgettes which actually loves being around and you can see all the bees and if we look in here I think we will see that there are beautiful courgettes that I might pick for later and these are my dahlia seedlings grown from seed and the reason that I have just grown such a, a weird mixture is that they are for dyeing and they're a really good dye plant and a pack of seeds was a nice cheap way to get a lot of different uh, varieties to try out particularly for eco printing and in front of the dahlias I have these very beautiful tajites um, which are Taji Palida and they do work as a dye plant um, and are rather beautiful and elegant and then walking up here you can hear Teasel barking in the background um, I have my very tall sunflowers um, these were meant to be hoppy dye sunflowers but were clearly mislabeled on the, the packet and also got some very lovely flowers if you look closely and you uh, ignore all of the vines and then round here past the rhubarb patch um, we have 
down at the bottom here some uh, different kinds of marigolds. These are like the bedding marigolds that you can get um, everywhere, it would seem, in the spring. And they are wonderful, wonderful uh, dye plants. And I'm just picking every single one and drying them off so that I can use them through the winter. And here are some beautiful teasels, which have obviously self-sown. Um, more rhubarb. Borage, which is largely here for the bees. This is all self-sown. Um, and this is in amongst the indigo crop here, you can see. And this is the view looking back over the garden um, towards the house. And you can see that it's a very relaxed kind of garden. Um, but it gives me so much happiness. Oh, here's Dixie coming to see us. And in amongst all of these, it's really important to me that I continue to have space to grow uh, vegetables. It's my bean trellis. This is a kind of bean called Cherokee Tears, which I got from the Glasgow Seed Library. Uh, so some of the seeds um, from this will be shared back with them. And over here is Dyer's Chamomile, which is just a glorious, glorious plant. And you can use it for printing, you can use it for um, dyeing. And again, my aim is to pick all of these and keep them for the winter. But what I really wanted to show you is that if you go out of this kind of secret path at the end of the garden, you come out at the airstream and past the willow herb, and then you get to the bit that is on top of my studio, and this is where the meadow is. When I stopped being a flower grower, when I became ill and I just couldn't do it anymore, um, I gave away lots of my plants. And the ones that I had left over, I planted into this kind of heap of spoil that um, was created when we made the studio. And what has developed is so much more beautiful than any planned garden that I could imagine because plants have put themselves where they want to be things have come in things have died out and every day it just brings me so much joy <laughs>